Most Christmas movies have to do with magic and the spirit of Christmas, but one movie came along and showed us just how freaking stressful Christmas can be. Coming out in 1989 and directed by Jeremiah S. Cheshick, Christmas Vacation is an instant classic to anyone who celebrates Christmas. But what makes this movie so different from all the other Christmas classics? Well, it's hard to tell. All the things in the movie seem dumb and sloppy, but for some reason, it just works. What you think shouldn't work ends up working in the end. Let's find out why what shouldn't work ends up working really well. This is Christmas Vacation. We start off the movie with an odd animation of nothing but Santa getting tortured while trying to get into the Griswold's house. And it's not even the Griswold's fault, it's just bad luck for Santa while coincidentally trying to get into the Griswold's house. It's only there to pique the interest of kids, and it's nothing more. We then meet Clark Griswold, played by Chevy Chase, taking his wife Ellen, played by Beverly D'Angelo, and his kids Russell, played by Johnny Galecki, and Audrey, played by Juliette Lewis, to get a Christmas tree. The family dynamic is much more realistic in this movie compared to The Lost Boys, with uninterested kids, worried wife, and over-enthusiastic father, unlike in The Lost Boys where they seemed a little too perfect as to help with conflicts in that movie, but this one tries to be more relatable to help progress its story. Before Clark and his family reach their destination, they run into some reckless drivers, and what does Clark do to the reckless drivers? He provokes them. <laughs> That works out about as well as I expected, but what does he do next? He provokes them again. Wow, they are going the same continuous speed and pace to be able to stay in the same place under the truck and not be dead. As they head into the forest to find the perfect Christmas tree, Clark Griswold ignores his daughter's slowly dying frostbite. Dad, did you bring a saw? Wait, wait, so let me get this straight. They used all their strength to pull that tree out of the ground and carry it back to the car even when one of them was almost frozen to death. So the Griswolds head home and hey a reference to a movie about a murder in a Christmas movie. Don't you feel the joy? This is where we meet Todd Chester played by Nicholas Guest and Marco Chester played by Julia Louis-Dreyfus who I swear are just in this movie to be tortured. After this, Clark heads inside with the tree only to find out it's too big, and even though his family warns him not to open it, he does it anyway. Huh, I'm starting to notice a trend here. After this, Clark tells Ellen about how he wants a perfect Christmas with the entire family. This sets up the big conflict of the film, which is Clark having high expectations for things and wanting it to be perfect, which usually fails and blows up in his face. Which is actually really good character motivation for such a silly little movie. I wouldn't expect it, but the writers actually tried to make this character arc. After this, we find out that Clark is putting in a pool and he needs his Christmas bonus to pay the rest of it off which is one of his character motivations that will definitely get crushed by the end of the movie. Then we meet Mr. Frank Shirley, played by Brian Doyle Murray, and he plays his role perfectly as the big boss man, and you enjoy every moment he is on screen. After this is a pointless scene with a bunch of innuendos as the joke because Haha, innuendos funny cause inappropriate. 
After this, the family is at home when their family arrives in one of the most relatable scenes that I can't even explain. You just have to watch this scene to understand what I am talking about. After the family gets all settled in, Clark goes outside deciding he's going to make the biggest light display ever. I think you might be overdoing it, Dad. Russ, when was the last time I overdid anything? about what he does in his bed alone when I'm not lying right next. Hold up. I think the real sick thing is how you dream about your little brother in bed. Hey, Dad, where do you want these reindeer? Let's put them down there in the lawn, Russ. I know I haven't mentioned it, but Russ is such a fun character. He always says the right stuff at the right time just for it to be perfectly comedic. And that is what makes him a great character. Nobody I know drives by and sees me standing in the yard staring at the house in my pajamas. I have to say though, I hate Audrey's character. All she does in the film is complain and a couple of other things. But her main character is complaining teenager and she just becomes unlikable. After all the work Clark went through to put up the lights, they don't turn on. After all this goes down, Clark stays outside late at night trying to fix the lights. And he wakes up the next morning to hide some Christmas presents. Don't you think you should check to see if someone's up there first? Gluck should know better than to stand on top of the door you were trying to open because if he did open it, he would be very badly hurt. Why doesn't he try to crawl through the hole he just made in the floor? After this, Clark finds some old tapes of his past Christmases, which will only fuel his motivation as the film goes on. <laughs> First of all, why did he think sitting there would be a good idea? And second of all, they should be very injured. After this, we see Clark continuing to work on the lights, only to see it fail, which symbolizes his idea of the perfect Christmas. And when the lights fail, we get a bit of foreshadowing of his freak out later in the movie. He then gets the lights working again, and he went through all that hardship, struggle, and frustration. He can finally have a perfect Christmas. Oh wait, Cousin Eddie's here. Cousin Eddie, played by Randy Quad, is coming on a surprise visit to see Clark and his family for the holidays, and Eddie is one of the best characters in this movie, which is funny since he seems like he shouldn't work. He looks like the classic annoying hillbilly character, but you just find him likable. Maybe it's the writing, or Randy's performance, or a mixture of both, but his character just works. And the relationship between Eddie and Clark is just perfect. Clark hates Eddie, yet Eddie loves Clark and thinks Clark loves him, which just works in so many ways and gives so many memorable lines. With this in mind though, this part does have some problems. It completely goes off the tracks of what we've been invested in for this part of the movie, and sort of becomes like a skit show until the final night of the movie. But this is completely overshadowed by the fact that the best character just came in the movie.
It's like the movie took one step back, then three steps forward. Are you surprised? <laughs> surprised, Daddy? <laughs> If I woke up tomorrow with my head sewn to the carpet, I wouldn't be more surprised than I am right now. You could have phrased that any other way and it would have sounded less scary. Stop! No! Oh, don't worry about it, Clark. Little tree water ain't gonna hurt him. Before we left, he drank a half a quart of pins oil. Boy, when he lifted his leg the next morning. Whoa! <laughs> Can I refill your eggnog for you? Get you something to eat? Drive you out to the middle of nowhere? Leave you for dead? Clark's slowly showing signs of being a sociopath. Oh yes, it's been a while since we've had a Frank Shirley scene, and this scene is great with the awkward close-ups, the funny lines, and the fact that he constantly gets Clark's name wrong. Even though it's cliche, when Frank Shirley says it, it's gonna make me laugh. So the family is out sledding when Clark is going to use the lubricant to make his sled faster, and Eddie says some funny lines because of course he does. And what happens next makes me laugh every time I watch this movie. Later, dudes. Later, Rip. Ain't pen. Oh, It just happens so suddenly that you never see it coming, and it always makes me laugh. Bingo. How did he see that down a mountain, through a forest, and across a road? After not dying for the tenth time in this movie, Clark is back at work, bummed out because he hasn't received his bonus, which only adds to the stress on his shoulders. Then comes a scene where he starts fantasizing about his pool outside with his family, but Eddie's in it, so he starts fantasizing about- Nope, 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 I'm not doing this. Your parents wouldn't show you the scene, so I'm not going to either. Next scene. As Clark is fantasizing, Eddie's daughter interrupts him, and they have a nice little conversation where Eddie's daughter thinks Santa isn't real, because Santa didn't bring them anything last year. And Clark says that Santa always comes to his house, and that they will get gifts this year, and this only fuels Clark's motivation to have a perfect Christmas. Next scene is just Clark and Eddie talking, which is always great in this movie. And all it leads up to is Clark buying Eddie's kids presents, and Eddie owing him something which will cause conflict later on in the film. Now we're in the home stretch, the final night of the movie. And hey, if you made it this far into the video, consider subscribing so you can be notified of my next movie review. This is where we get introduced to Aunt Bethany, played by Mae Questel, and Uncle Lewis, played by William Hickey, who are hilarious in these final scenes, and I think the writers made a smart decision only putting them in the last 30 minutes because they would have gotten annoying after a while. She wrapped up her cat. Take it in the kitchen and open it up. Then we'll have a cat running around the house. You can't leave it in the box. With the way Clark's been acting recently, I wouldn't be surprised if you let it suffocate in there. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation indivisible. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Wait, what am I doing? Uh, sir, we accidentally mixed up the turkey that was set to explode with a prop from Alien. Uh, it's okay, just leave it in there. I'm sure it'll be fine. After this, they eat the chicken dry, and the cat starts chewing on the wire in the other room, unplugging the tree, and Clark notices, and goes in there, plugs it back in, and the cat dies a painful death. You know? I wonder if Clark did that on purpose. After this, Uncle Lewis heads into the living room to smoke on his stogie, but because the tree is dried up, he sets it and himself on fire. After this, the family makes Clark feel worse about his tree being burnt down by calling it ugly in front of him. But then a person comes knocking at the door. What do you want? 
guy. This is the mailman who meant to give him a letter a day earlier, but he misplaced it. And Clark can only assume it's his Christmas bonus check. I can't swim, Clark. You will need help swimming because I'll drown you. Turns out it's not his Christmas bonus check and it's a subscription to the Jelly of the Month Club. And this is the last straw. He has truly lost his mind. He has started the process of becoming a sociopathic killer. And I plan to show you all the different stages of this process. Clark's first sign of sociopathic tendencies is when he began to imagine how to torture his boss. Like in this scene. Hey! If any of you are looking for any last minute gift ideas for me, I have one. I like Frank Shirley, my boss, right here tonight. I want him brought from his happy holiday slumber over there on Melody Lane with all the other rich people. And I want him brought right here with a big ribbon on his head. And I want to look him straight in the eye and I want to tell him what a cheap, lying, no good, rotten, four flushing, low life, snake licking, dirt eating, inbred, overstuffed, ignorant, blood sucking, dog kissing, brainless, hopeless, hopeless heartless, fat, bug eyed, Stiff legged, spotty lip, worm headed sack of monkey shit he is. The next sign is crazy eyes and starting to hold some kind of weapon and threaten your family. This is usually brought on by some kind of alcoholic drink, but in Clark Griswold's case, he's fueled by pure rage. The next stage is taking out your anger on inanimate objects. Post. This won't last long though because then he will begin to take his anger out on animals. I'll try and trap it. Russ! We're here, Dad. Oh, there you are. Go get the hammer. Clark, what do you need a hammer for? I'm gonna catch it in the coat. Smack it with the hammer. And this is the final stage before he kills. So anyway, after the squirrel gets out the Okay, the dog begins to... Can you stop doing that? Anyway, the dog begins wrecking the... Destroy the house. There, I finished my sentence. Are you gonna interrupt me now? Of course you aren't. After they contain the squirrel, everyone tries to leave, but Clark won't let them because he's not done with them. And he heads into the garage to cool down when his father goes to talk to him in pretty wholesome scene in between the action, which works well since so much has been happening in the last few scenes, and it is a nice little conversation. As Clark reads the night before Christmas, he sees that Eddie has kidnapped Frank Shirley and brought him to his house. Frank is set free immediately and finishes his little character arc with him feeling bad about taking away the Christmas bonuses from the families and decides to give Clark a little extra money with his bonus but he probably still won't be able to afford the pool since all the damage caused by this one night. Since Frank learned his lesson, he decides not to press charges, and the lesson is, well, I'll just let Clark explain it. And that's all that matters tonight. Not bonuses, or gifts, or turkeys, or trees. See, kids, it means something different to everybody. Now I know what it means to me. And then Uncle Lewis explodes. <laughs> and that was Christmas Vacation. It had many problems, such as the middle of the movie turning into a bunch of skits, but for every problem it had, it just kept bringing even better stuff into the movie. Every time the movie stepped back one step, it moved forward three. And that's what makes it the perfect Christmas movie. It doesn't want you to like it for the story. It wants you to have fun. And I think it accomplishes that. And that's why I'm giving this movie 8 out of 10 stars. Whew. Finally finished with the review. Wait. What the heck? Why is Clark Griswold on the screen? Any of you are looking for any last minute gift ideas for me? I have one. We needed the coffin. <laughs> the movie finished. And I want to look him straight in the eye, and I want to tell him what a cheap, lying, no good, rotten, four flushing, low life, snake licking, dirt eating, inbred, overstuffed, ignorant, blood 
sucking, dog kissing, brainless, this hopeless, heartless, fat, bug eyed, stiff legged, spotty lip, worm headed sack of monkey. He is. Thank you for checking out the video. If you haven't yet, consider subscribing. If you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button. And I will see you in the next video. And have a Merry Christmas.